Dave Sign Guy here. I know it's been a minute since my last video, but I have been working on some projects on the van. Uh, I've got the exterior about 90% done, still waiting on solar panels um, so that I can install those on the roof before I really get moving on the inside. But I have most of the components for my electrical system, and today I think I want to go over that with you. So stay tuned. Okay, we're back and I want to talk to you today about what I'm doing for my electrical system in my van. Uh, what I'm going to talk about to the best of my ability is my 12 volt system and my 110, 120 volt system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from my right to my left, uh, starting with my 12 volt system and then talking about how I'm going to work in shore power and 110. So let's start with where most power starts on these vans is the solar. And I don't have my solar panels just yet. I plan on getting 200, uh, uh, two 200 watt solar panels uh, to go on the van, which should bring in 200 watts of power uh, on a decent day. Uh, from those solar panels, you come down into your solar charger. And I'm using a Renergy a 30 amp MPPT solar charger. From that solar charger, we go straight to the battery. From the battery, I go to my inverter. The inverter I'm gonna be using is a Renogy 3000 watt pure sign inverter. Uh, I wanna make sure I have enough power to briefly run an air conditioner on really hot days. Um, even though I'm in the Northeast, the summers still get brutal. It is July, or not quite July, no, it's uh, uh, June 29th, I think, today, and it's almost 100 degrees and humid. Doesn't get that way very often up here, but when it does, if you're out camping, that's brutal. Now, what I'm doing as far as monitoring the system, I'm going to have a battery monitor uh, for the battery, again, Renogy. I try to stay within the same company when I'm dealing with a 12 volt system so everything is almost plug and play. I'm also going to use a Bluetooth module so I can monitor from my cell phone. And lastly, I'm going to have a cutoff switch so that from the cab I can actually turn on and off my inverter. Now going from the inverter, you then go to your power distribution, however you're choosing to do that. Uh, I'm going to have a 12 volt uh, fuse box as well as two 12 volt positive and negative bus bars. The next way we're going to charge the battery in this vehicle is going to be from the vehicle alternator. So coming from the alternator, I'm going to have a 12 volt cutoff switch. From that 12 volt cutoff switch, I'm going into a battery isolator so that when the vehicle is off, I'm not drawing power from the vehicle battery whatsoever. You do not want to do that. That's a good way to get stuck out somewhere and, and uh, 
and kill your battery to your vehicle. So you, the best way to go about doing that is using a battery isolator that uh, kills that problem altogether. And then from the battery isolator again, you come to the battery bank. Now, uh, real quickly, I'm using three uh, ampere time, 200 amp hour batteries, which will give me 600 amp hours. Um, this should be enough to run anything. If I'm not running air conditioning, I should be able to be off grid with decent sun and driving around indefinitely. Um, with the air conditioning, I should get anywhere from 8 to 12 hours an evening of cool air blowing through my air conditioner on medium to low. Um, and other than that, I mean, that should be way more than enough power. Uh, a good average would be about 400 amp hours. I like to overkill just a little bit so that I'm never without power. I'm also going to be running an induction stove from time to time. So between an air conditioner and induction stove, I want to make sure uh, I have more than enough power. Back to, uh, back to the power system. So that's how all this is going to be uh, run on the 12 volt. Now, lastly, I will be charging off of shore power if we're at campgrounds as well. So uh, you go from your exterior 30 amp plug-in, which is what I got right here on three prong, to your transformer, which tells the vehicle that, hey, you're not needing your, uh, uh, you're not needing your 300 watt pure sine inverter uh, we got power comfort from the outside, as well as going to a 12 volt uh, uh, power source. So we're not, if you're plugged in, you don't necessarily have to use the batteries either. You can just use 12 volt from your 120, as well as having a DC to DC charger, which means when you're plugged in, again, you're charging your batteries. So your batteries have three different ways to charge. You're charging from the sun, you're charging from exterior or shore power when you're plugged in, and when you're driving, you're charging from your alternator. Um, make sure your vehicle is capable of handling charging another set of batteries uh, from your alternator, because if you don't have a powerful enough alternator, you can just burn it up. Uh, I bought my van with a higher end alternator in order to be able to run the vehicle, uh, or I should say run the camper batteries and charge them from my vehicle while it's running. That is a very quick overview of my electrical system that I will be putting in this van. As I build the van, I will be showing you uh, step by step. Uh, where I'm at in that build process. I'm not necessarily showing how to do it because uh, I don't want to cause anybody to make mistakes based on how I do things in case I make a mistake. But I will show you what I've done and what mistakes have, I may have made and what is working as I do this build. So uh, the van itself, like I said, the exterior is about 90% complete. Uh, the last item I want to do is a solar panel uh, setup on the roof, and as I do that solar panel setup, I want to create like a six to eight inch deep box under the solar panels for storage. Just putting the store, uh, solar panels up on the roof, to me, it, uh, it kind of kills some of the space on the roof, so I figure why not use it for storage for like chairs and and things you would keep outside the vehicle anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna make a box that uh, the solar panels rest on and you will be able to tilt those solar panels up towards the sun as well as using those solar panels as a box cover. So uh, hopefully that works really well and I will show you that as well. So uh, the next video I'm gonna go over all the things I've done on the exterior thus far and I probably won't do that until I've actually installed those solar panels. So this is Dave the Sign Guy with a short little video on my electrical system. I hope this shows you exactly what I'm looking to do. And uh, yeah, happy trails and good luck on your build if you're doing the same thing. Thank you.